So this book that I'll invite you to try on for size, it gets a bad rep. I once shared the gospel with a man who came from a long, long line of Orthodox, Orthodox Jews. And he had this idea, this, this teaching that he had inherited from his father, who heard it from his father and his father, such and so on, that the Christians have this New Testament that is a manual on how to persecute Jews and, and tells them to kill the Jews. And this was, he genuinely believed this. And so I can't imagine what he thought every time he drove past a church. He's like, they're in there learning how to, how to kill me, I guess. And, and it's true, like they haven't, haven't been treated well as a people collectively and historically. However, when he actually began to read the New Testament, just a few words into the very first book of the New Testament, he recognized a very important name. Abraham, the patriarch of the whole Jewish race. It was a big light bulb moment for him that he had, he had really misrepresented the Bible in his head. Same thing as well with some militant atheists that I've seen come to faith in Christ over the years. They kind of had this idea that it was a book of just mere fairy tales and stupid stuff. And you had to throw your brain in the trash can in order to believe. They would kind of isolate the whole thing to the idea of a snake that talked once or a guy walking on water. And that's just foolishness, so I'm not going to believe it until they began to consider the moral significance of this and its influence. That's actually been kind of circulating pop culture lately. When you actually begin to read this book, you see something. You see something. So I'm going to open it. It's my Bible. And right off the bat, if you maybe come from like a Catholic background, you're going to look at my table of contents here and you're going to say like, aha, you're missing books. Yes, I know about the deuterocanonical texts or as Protestants refer to them as the, the Apocrypha, these books that are, some of them true, like the books of the Maccabees, totally true, just not relevant to the story of Jesus. Other books as well that we can't totally account for. Their historicity isn't as steadfast as the others that were collected at the councils of Nicaea. But when we look at this book and its table of contents, we see the beginning and the end. It begins at the beginning, Genesis, and it ends at the ending, Revelation. It's a story, and you and I live between these books. The opening, the first five books that I believe were inspired by God through Moses, right? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers and Deuteronomy. These are the law. So it begins with the law. When you open up the Bible, it begins with this standard. There it is. In one of my favorite shows of all time, Arrested Development. You have Michael Bluth and his son, George Michael. And George Michael's facing a moral quandary. He doesn't know which way to go. Meanwhile, George Michael's aunt, Michael Bluth's sister, is on a campaign to have a monument to the Ten Commandments removed from outside the local courthouse. By the episode's end, father and son are walking outside. And George Michael says, if only, it's just hard to know what's right and what's wrong sometimes. And then Michael Blue says, I know, son, if only there were some list of rules from on high that would help you know. In the background, evidently, evidently, Portia de Rossi's character's campaign was successful because this massive crane is like beeping as the Ten Commandments are lifted away from the courthouse. That's what this is. This is... This is where we get the Ten Commandments from. Laws against murder, for example. And they all find their origin right here. We don't have to guess at what's right and what's wrong because God, from the outside, the perfect one, gave them to us. Literally, the, the text describes him writing in the stone with his own finger, the Ten Commandments. There's also commands for how Israel, the chosen people of God in the Old Testament, were to live and function. Now, from here, we have books of wisdom and prophecy the minor prophets and the major prophets, and they all point forward to this beautiful future Messiah one day. They also foretell the history of the nation of Israel before it all took place. And then when we get to the New Testament, it opens up with four distinct books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the Gospels. The story of the, the birth and life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The whole story really points to him. From there, there's this book called Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. It tells us what happened right after the events of the Gospels. It's where the church was born. And then what remains are these letters to the churches that we as churches, imperfect though we are, we strive to meet the standard and abide by. 
what the church is supposed to do. And then at the very end, we have these prophetic books like Revelation that tell us how the story ends. And from beginning to end, it's all his story. It's all his book. When we go through the table of contents of the Bible, we can see the account for what's right and what's wrong. We can see why we're also broken the way that we are. We can see that evil exists and has been given a degree of freedom within this world, but ultimately has a reckoning coming. We can see this beautiful hope on the horizon that by God's design, he would be with his people despite our fallen state, despite our sin forevermore. And we can see also these promises, these beautiful, hopeful promises, all ultimately fulfilled. God has kept every one of the promises he made in the Old Testament. And there's more to come. There's even some, like in the book of Daniel, that foretell stuff that's going to take place in the New Testament era. And in the New Testament era, we see the life and ministry of Jesus. It all comes back to Jesus. The whole Old Testament was pointing forward to Jesus. The whole New Testament remembers and looks forward to Jesus. This is the book. This is the Logos. This is what Christianity offers. And when you look at the world through this lens, you can account for all of the big major questions. You can find redemption for absolutely every conceivable brokenness. You can find hope in any circumstance. You can find a savior for the consequences of our own mistakes, our own sin. You can find a sense of justice for the injustice you observe in the world. You can find the Logos right here. I commend the Bible to you, my friend. It is the truth. It is the Logos. It is the foundation for truth.